today's class is going to be a pelvic floor support class. So we're going to be up against a wall for this one and you might want a blanket for your head. Um, these stretches are all aimed at gently stretching the muscles that attach to the pelvic floor. So rather than doing exercises that actually are working the pelvic floor, instead we're going to think about gently stretching through the groin, the hips, um, the glutes, the back of the legs and the low back. So all of the muscles that connect onto the pelvic floor and that, that if they're tight can actually contribute to pelvic floor dysfunction and discomfort. So this is going to be a really nice practice to do if you are, for example, recovering after labour um, or you're wanting to work on your pelvic floor in general, but it's also going to be a really nice pain relief sequence to help anyone who's struggling with pelvic floor pain. Um, so our aim with these stretches is actually not to overstretch. Instead, we're just looking for quite subtle sensations. I'm going to talk you through this in each of the stretches, but that's just something to really keep in mind here, that you're looking for little or even almost no sensation. This is not a big active stretch. We're going to hold each stretch for about a minute, a minute and a half, um, and just gently allow the ligaments, the tissues to gently um, loosen and become more comfortable. And these are definitely stretches that you could do every day. And if you are wanting to work on your pelvic floor, on pain relief in the pelvic region, I would definitely recommend doing a sequence like this at some point every day. Okay, so we're coming up against a wall. And the first pose that we're going to take is a straddle. So um, I'm just going to bring my hips closer to the wall. I'm going to bring my wee blanket for my head. And then I'm going to roll myself onto my back here. <coughs> Excuse me. First of all, just getting comfy with your blanket. And then you want to adjust your stance in relation to the wall. What we're aiming for with all of these stretches is that the top of the hip bones and the pelvic bone would be level. So if you know, you've got one hip a bit higher than the other, or if the pelvic bone is higher than the other, scoot yourself either a little bit away from the wall or a little bit closer to the wall until their level. Right now I can feel, okay, before my pelvic bone was a little bit higher, now it's level with the tops of my hips. So I'm going to stay here and then I'm just going to widen my legs into a V just until I have a slight sensation here through the adductors, through the groin that I can comfortably hold. It's absolutely fine to have a bend in the knees if that's more comfortable to you. Um, and they could be much narrower together as well. This might be enough for you, and that's absolutely fine. So just find the pose with this leveling across these three bones, gentle stretch, and then you could let your arms fall to the sides if you want, or you could rest them on your abdomen or maybe even onto your hips. The warmth from your hands can be quite nice. And with all of these poses, our aim is to get our breath as slow and deep as possible to keep our body really relaxed. So we're aiming to communicate safety in this pose to our brain so that our nervous system keeps us in rest and digest and parasympathetic rather than sending us up into anxiety. Now, often if you have been struggling with chronic pain or you're recovering from, say, an operation in this region, um, there can be quite a lot of fear around this part of the body. And when we start to feel fearful of pain or sensation in this area, that can actually contribute to worsening the pain because pain is a threat signal from the brain. It's there to tell us that something isn't quite right. So if we're feeling anxious, stressed, or unhappy about this part of the body, that communicates to the brain and the brain will actually ramp up the sensation a little bit higher. So in order to be able to really relax these muscles and not be holding any tension or be going into any kind of threat response, we want to use our breath to be as calm as possible. So we're aiming to breathe deeply into the abdomen, really just to move the diaphragm. This is why we talk about abdominal breathing, because when you breathe into your abdomen and it rises, the diaphragm shifts a little bit 
open when you breathe out, the diaphragm relaxes. And this communicates to the nervous system that we are safe. And it will keep us in rest and digest and allow the body to relax. Another thing that you could do with these stretches, if you want to make them even more supportive, if you want to help yourself feel safer doing them, would be doing something like having a heat pack underneath your low back. You know, maybe you've got one of those we plug in blankets and just keep a little bit of warmth, or you could drape something even over your abdomen in this position as well to keep helping the muscles to relax, but most importantly, so that you feel safe doing these stretches. We're going to start to change position now. We're going to come into a pigeon pose. We have a couple of options here. So just bringing the left leg straight, you can bring your right ankle over the left knee and then check in with your hip bones. If this is comfortable for your legs and your hip bones still feel level, you can do it like this. In my case, I'm finding that I've lost a little bit of that integrity. So I'm actually just going to bring my foot flat onto the mat, flat onto the wall, sorry. And I'm going to wiggle myself back again until I can get my hips flat and level. And then I'm going to bring that right ankle over. And this actually also gives me a little bit more sensation, which I'm quite enjoying. So find the version of this pose that works for you. And then settle back in. There's nothing that you need to do in this pose. Your foot against the wall and the tension between the foot and your low back on the mat will do all of the work for you. So you can just focus on that deep breathing. Now we're just going to gently straighten that leg if you did have it bent and just overcross that right knee. So we're coming into like a sort of half um, cow face pose. Now again, my right hip is lifted up here, so I'm just going to shift that foot up against the wall to the middle, which is bringing my hips back level. And this, you'll notice, shifts 
the feeling in the hip that's being stretched. And again, come back to those slow, deep breaths. This might feel like a really passive practice if you are used to doing more active stretches or thinking of physiotherapy or um, yoga therapy as something quite active. But as I said at the beginning, what we're really aiming to do here is communicate safety to the nervous system and also to just bring a gentle loosening to the muscles around the pelvic floor. And it's actually that that can really improve the integrity through the pelvic floor and help relieve uh, referred pain in the area over time. So if your mind starts to feel like, oh, I don't like this, I don't like being still, I don't really feel like this is doing very much, it can be really helpful just to remind yourself of the biomechanics of what you're doing. And even just recognize that this is actually a really good practice if you do feel uncomfortable being still, this is really nice training for your brain to learn that stillness isn't a scary thing. You know, sometimes we have to do these gentle exposures to the source of our discomfort, like a discomfort with being still, in order to just break through the wiring in the brain that has come to associate stillness with danger. And again, I come back to the breathing here because the breathing is the key. It's keeping the body nice and relaxed through the breath. And it's that which will really communicate to the brain that this is not an unsafe practice, that this is actually a safe, even quite a pleasant place to be. You might notice if you are feeling quite tense doing this, that your jaw and your shoulders are rising up. So again, it can be really nice here just to allow your jaw to relax and your shoulders to feel really heavy on the mat and just notice if tension has started to creep in there. Let's just gently unwrap and just take any little movements through that hip or that leg. And then we're going to come to the other side. So bringing my right foot now to the wall, or you could again, you could have that leg straight. And I'm bringing my left ankle over the top of the knee. I'm just adjusting my pelvis a bit to find that level between the pelvic bone and the hip bones. <sighs> Coming back into my breathing.
And if you had your foot against the wall, we'll gently straighten that leg, overcrossing that knee, adjusting your foot on the wall to wherever's going to give you that level pelvis. Coming back to your breath. The unwrapping, making any little movements to loosen up through those legs. And our last pose up against the wall is going to be like a, kind of like a squat or a frog pose against the wall. So I'm going to come a little bit closer now, bringing the feet flat on the wall and just wiggling until you get that little bit of a stretch through the groin again. And then just seeing if you can get ankles and knees roughly in line. And knees roughly over hips. Checking in with the pelvis again. And here I actually do quite like to lift my arms above my head. This is totally optional. But I quite like the little bit of upper body stretch that you get here as well. And then again, just really trying to relax. Just letting the feet and the hips. And that tension between the wall and the floor do the work. And just see if you can let the upper body really rest on the mat. Coming back into your breathing, letting the hips relax. I just move my arms down, just as I was starting to get pins and needles in that right hand. So always if you get pinching, tingling, anything like that when your arms are above your head, just make sure that you bring them back down again.
taking our last couple of breaths here. And then to come out of this pose, just walk your feet back together again. And we're just going to roll onto our side. And just pause for a moment. Just let everything relax. And then bringing your hands, you can gently bring yourself up. And we're going to come to sit against the wall. You could bring the blanket under your hips here for a little bit of elevation if you like. I actually quite like putting my feet on it. Um, shuffling back so your hips are up against the wall. Gradually peeling your spine back so you're in this supported staff pose. Just give yourself a minute here. Coming back upright. And then our final stretch is actually just going to be um, a really passive forward fold, so a caterpillar pose. So just gently dropping the chin to the chest and allowing your body to slowly roll forward, just until you find a point that it feels like you can really just relax in this pose. And you'll feel a nice stretch along, all the way along the back of the legs, the glutes, and through the low back and up the spine. So we're really targeting the whole of the back body here, which is just a really lovely, gentle pose. You look a little bit like you're a kind of rag doll that's sort of slumped, but focus more on the sensation rather than how it looks. And again, try and come back into that deep breathing if you can. It's obviously it's a little bit harder here because you're compressing through the front body. as much as possible, trying to come back to that sense of calm, maybe noticing all the points along the legs and your seat and your low back that are supported. And as you breathe, you can even feel a little bit of expansion through the upper back which can be quite nice to focus on. Take a couple more breaths here. And then planting the hands into the mat, we're going to walk the hands back and use that to gently, slowly peel the spine back against the wall. So your head is the last thing to come up and you're back up in this really supported staff pose. And again, just pause here. And when you do start to move away from the sequence, just do it nice and slowly and mindfully. And just as you move, do a little check-in. How 
low body, the low back, the pelvis you're feeling. I hope you really enjoyed this little yoga therapy sequence. And if you do do it regularly, um, it should give you um, some improvement in terms of pelvic floor strength and flexibility and also in pain relief in the area. Thanks so much for practicing with me.